Hello and welcome back to the final episode of Sandy Bay this week. I bet you thought I was going to say ever then. No, far from it. Sandy Bay, we're going to be doing this LP for a long time to come. Many more months of it yet. So, we've got a few jobs to do today, primarily around the cows, and I've actually found a job for our JCB. It's been sat in that grain store for the past 20 episodes, doing nothing. So it's about time we put it to some use. So I actually noticed that the cows, strangely, have got absolutely no feed at all. They have no straw, no water, and no feed. I don't know why this has happened. I guess they've just consumed it really quickly because we have so many. But the job today is to get all this sorted out, ready for next week, because we won't have time to do it next week or the week after. You can probably guess why. Next week, we've got the Holmer DLC. We're going to be using that probably for three episodes. Um, and then the week after that, we'll probably be doing our oat harvest. So we won't be doing it then. So we need to get this out of the way now. They obviously need to be fed. So I'll put the manure in the heap here. I think there's probably only about two bucket loads. It's not much at all. And once we've done this, I've got the New Holland set up with the Blue Bale trailer. And we'll take our Massey Ferguson as well, because we need one on the trailer and one on the feed mixer. We're going to put some silage bales on the trailer and bring them back. And then we'll put the feed mixer on the Massey Ferguson and bring that back as well. We already have the hay and the straw over at this farm. So once everything is back over here, we can mix everything together do a mixed ration. We can also just mix some silage, give them that as well, and also some water, and finally some straw. Actually thinking about it, we do need to bring the straw shredder as well, so we might need three tractors. But that is them mucked out for today. They weren't too bad, surprisingly, because we've got a lot of cows and they've consumed all their feed, so they, they obviously just digest it all. They don't really poo too much of it out. Anyway, let's put this back up here and then we'll have to sort out another tractor. We'll have to use two Massey Ferguson's and one New Holland and get all this sorted out. We'll bring everything back and pretty much go from there I think. Yeah, we've got the 6616 here, which I put here yesterday, off screen after the video, because my intention was to wash it. It's not going to get very mucky today anyway, so I'm going to be doing a bit of road work. So just clean it up a bit. So basically, we'll be going up there with two tractors with nothing on the back, and one tractor with the trailer, and coming back with three full loads. We'll have the bales on the trailer, the feed mixer on one tractor, and the bale shredder on another. So we really are doing everything today. We're going to drive the New Holland because it's, I think it's the slowest, so we have to be on that one really. We will get this one started up. This one has got the spikes on, the bale spike because we're going to load up the silage bales. Well, I'm going to attempt to anyway. If I can't do it, then we'll just auto stack them. Uh, but the plan is to put a few on there with this. It won't be too many. It'll be in the region of probably five or maybe six. Not too many at all. So that is in a good position. I tend to get comments regarding the position I put the bale spike in. But you see, a lot of people... I think a lot of people do travel down the road with it like this. Let me just position it like that. Which I guess is okay because you're not going to prod anyone. But um, yeah, the way I was told to do it was to do it like this. Obviously not too high because it will make it really unstable. But yeah, that is the way I've done it before and it was fine. I didn't flip the tractor at least, so that is a bonus. So yeah, I think there's two ways of doing it. It just depends how you've been taught to do it. So, 
we've got everything. Let's begin. We'll put the beacons on. I've just swapped the tractor over, which is on the bale trailer, because for some strange reason, the hitch of the New Holland is hitting the road. Uh, I would have thought it was big enough to tow a trailer, but no, it doesn't seem to want to, so I've just swapped it over. We've now got it on the Massey Ferguson. The 5712, it is. I always forget those numbers. Red lights as usual. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think it's the the actual stand for the trailer which is hitting the floor. I'm not sure. But yeah, that tractor seems quite low at the back. I suppose it is just a bit bigger than a T4. It's only a T5. So, yeah. I guess it probably is a bit too big for it. They should get around there okay. Okay, we're back on track. It did the usual trick of getting stuck at the traffic lights, but it has rejoined us. And uh, yeah, as long as the bail stacking goes okay, then uh, the jobs today shouldn't be too painful to watch. Uh, I, what I'll probably do anyway is lock them on so that they don't come flying off, even if we do manually load them. But it could still be automatically loaded yet, we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, but if I position the trailer in a good enough position and then use the spike appropriately, then <laughs> there shouldn't really be any reason why they would fall off or not go on at all. There was the strange issue with the square bales where they were bouncing off, but these probably won't do the same thing. So here we are. I'm going to reverse in. I'll have to stop the follow me for the other two. Put it about there. Which means that now the New Holland will be towing back the bale shredder, which might be a more suitable implement for it anyway. It won't be as big or as heavy. So let's just get this tractor onto the trailer. I tend to attach them first because if you don't do, sometimes they the bales actually jump up when you attach to the trailer. So I, I always attach another tractor to the trailer first. Yeah, that can just have its engine turned off. Let's begin the process of putting the silage bales onto the trailer. So you might notice that I've actually got the bale spike instead of the bale grab. That's because it doesn't really matter that we're going to spike them. They're going to be opened up anyway. I might be able to get two bales on in one go. But I'm just going to start off with the one to begin with. Already noticing the the back of the tractor tipping over. Probably should have had a weight on there. But yeah, if there's two bears, if we have one on each side, they should uh, counterbalance it. And it should go on there a lot better. That's okay. This time, I'll do it from out of cab. We'll line up properly. Uh, try and spike two. Well, that's both in. Now it might just be a bit too heavy for the tractor. Right, so what I've done is I've put the 6616 on it, 
on the front loader. Still, it needs a rear weight, and uh, the trailer is also doing the, the shaky thing. So, I think, unfortunately, once again, we're going to have to put it onto automatic loading. But that is probably going to be better anyway because it won't be so painful to watch. So what I'll do is I'll just position them fairly close to the trailer. We've got three there already, we want six. As you can see when I pulled out of the bales before with the other tractor, it flipped them all upside down so things aren't going too well. Um, but when do they ever go too well in my videos? Whenever it comes to stacking bales, mm, it never goes too well. But if I take it steady, this tractor is okay. But I'll have to make a note to myself that these tractors require rear weight whenever you're moving bales. That is four. Those four are on, so if they can stay on, that would be really handy. I'll put another two on. And then we'll strap them on, and they should be okay. Okay, yeah, not a professional look that, but this should work. So the product type currently is straw square bales. We want, um, well, these are silage bales, so silage round bales. I've got it on the round bales mixed, we'll press B and now they have all strapped themselves on. At least now they won't come flying off. That is much better. I also must remember that they're called round mixed bales rather than round silage bales. It must be because they're wrapped. But anyway, now that is out of the way, just about, we can now attach to the feed mixer, which is located over here. And then I just need to find the bale shredder. I think it's the other side of the road. The pigs and the beef, they have got everything they need still. They're not really consuming that much. So we'll be able to leave them for quite a while. Only thing is they might need mucking out. But at the moment, they're okay. So that is the first tractor completed. We'll park that over here. Next we're in the New Holland and this really does want the lightest implement on the back. The bell shredder is over here. Now apologies if this is going to be a fairly long video. I'm probably going to cut it down to make it more manageable to watch uh, because usually when you're doing all this stuff it takes quite a while especially at my speed so I'm hoping to keep it within 30 minutes but it might go slightly over but that is all three tractors sorted so we'll now put them back on to follow me and we'll head back to Sandy Bay Farm there is still some forage it calls it in the feed mixer that is absolutely fine We'll just give that to the cows as it is, and whatever it recognises it as is just a bonus really, because we're going to give them pretty much everything anyway, uh, maybe the exception of just grass on its own. They'll have silage and total mixed ration, straw and water by the end of this session. So there's a lot to do, we need to get on with it, and then probably after this we won't be doing animal work for many more weeks to come, because they're all absolutely fine. Lights are green. That makes a change. Now I just have to swing out more because of the bale trailer. 
Now it was pointed out in yesterday's comments, quite rightly, that I shouldn't add the money which was used on the roller yesterday in the XML file because because it has technically fertilised the field it means we now don't have to fertilise it or spray it which would have cost money so instead it has actually done everything all in one so yes it, it would have cost us fertiliser which we're now not going to have to use so I have actually decided to agree and I have not added the money back I think that's for the best really you know I tend to say that realism is what I want to do in my videos like I said before there are always going to be occasions when I just don't realize that something is done the way it is um, or if I just accidentally do something wrong but yes if you ever have any serious suggestions to improve the realism um, then yeah that'd be good to hear like that comment it was actually very constructive it allowed me to see that the best thing to do is to actually leave the money as it is now um, let me concentrate we need to um, actually go out of the way here because we're not going to use this tractor first of all we're going to use that one over there followed by the one which is coming very slowly behind uh, this one is last so we'll turn that off there you may notice the beacon is staying on that is a new mod the auto light mod uh, I'll link it below so you can download it same people or same group of modders as the uh, manual ignition mod vertex design so we'll stop that one there as well so I'll just position this tractor over here we can take the bells as we need them and all we have to do is unload them but we want to keep them on the trailer so I think if you press 6 and then keep pressing M when it disappears that is when they'll stay on the trailer so unload there we go and yeah that tractor is finished with now for the mixer we actually want to go through here and we're going to give them whatever is in the mixer at the moment it'll probably register as just silage I would have thought let's just see what that is actually doing cows oh no that is actually mixed ration but that is not going to be enough we'll have to give them some more I think they'll probably take an entire load of the mixer of mixed ration so that is half it might be worth just doing the silage to begin with because then anything that's left over we can just leave in the mixer I'll position that just there Hopefully it's chocked up behind, so it doesn't roll away. Yep, it's got a chock under there, good. So now what we want to do is we want to put two silage bales into the mixer. I've just got to get a rear weight. So that is the rear weight on. We've got a bale. I'm not sure what it is, whether it's a conflict with another mod or something. But just these last few episodes, that trailer has been really shaking about and it's shaking all the bells off. Um, it didn't used to do it and I haven't downloaded any other updates since, so I can only assume that it is a conflict because it used to work perfectly. So it must just be another mod I've got which is messing it up. You can see it's shaking them all off. They're still going. I suppose my offloading skills aren't that good either and it looks like probably three bales are required here I don't want to overdo it though
Hey, it's a pet pigeon or whatever it is. Turkey. Yeah, turkey. Pet pigeon. No. I don't think so. We wouldn't have a pet pigeon. That should be enough. That should be fine. So, this could be our loading up tractor. We'll use the other one for moving around the mixer. Yeah, definitely a turkey. Let's go and give them this. 12,000 litres should be more than what they'll ever need. Because their primary feed, I think, is the mixed ration. So this is just like a bonus for when we forget to feed them. All to do with balanced diets, I guess. And if it doesn't all empty, then we'll just put the hay and the straw on top. But with a bit of luck it will do. Yep, good. So yeah, they've taken a lot of that. They really are hungry beasts. This time, we'll give them the mixed ration. And uh, I think I've shown it many times before me loading this, so I'll just get it all loaded up and then we'll give it to them. And then after that we'll do the water, and then finally we'll do the straw. There we go, all done. Hopefully that is a good mixture. It is registering as mixed ration, and I have done it the way that everyone told me to do it, so it should be all good. It's only 88% full, but they've already had about 52%, so it should be fine. We're starting to lose the light a bit, it's going dusk. I want to get this done. When we've done this, I'll have a look at the statistics and see how much they've got of each type. Um, yeah, 25,753 litres of mixed ration. 12,000, it was anyway, uh, of silage. The grass will do at the same time as the sheep, which isn't yet. We just need to do the water and the straw now. So we'll put this away and we'll go and put the water bowser on and we'll finish off with the straw. We do need to tidy up those bales. They have all either been pushed off by me or shaken off by the trailer and uh, yeah, I need to turn the beacon off as well for that tractor. So I've just parked that tractor in the shed. The water bowser is still on the JCB from the other day, so we'll just move this tractor. It's got 17% in there. We're running a bit low on money. Apparently you can fill this up from the river, but the nearest river to here is... I'm not sure, you know. I don't know where the nearest river is. I think it might be easier just to fill it up from the water fill point, which has moved. Yeah, it's expensive water. It must be mineral water. Wow, that is more expensive than fuel. We definitely need to find a water source to get that a bit cheaper. I think that was about a thousand pounds or something, just to fill one tank of water. And 
and yeah, there's a certain side you fill this from. I think it's the back. It seems to remember it's the back. It is. And I would guess that that would take pretty much all the tank. I would have thought it would take it all. The cows do take a lot. Yeah, so that is all good. That is another job done. And finally, after this very long-winded process, it is time for the straw. We're going to give them two straw bales. I think that's all they need. And then that is the cows completely sorted for now. So this is actually a good opportunity to use this properly because I tend to have it sloping backwards where it doesn't actually work. This time it's sloping forwards so at least it won't actually roll out of the shredder. There's our bale. All sorted. Now I just need to hope that it's going to roll in and not ping and fly out. Good. So here comes bale number one. We should probably go in the other way actually because it's going to throw it the opposite direction. Here it goes. They should really appreciate that. Now just one more. Has finished with this tractor today, so this one can go away as well. And finally, let's get this thing lifted up and given to the cows. And that is us done. So if we go into here, we should be able to see now that they've got pretty much everything they need. The main things anyway, just the grass really, uh, which isn't a problem. And the productivity is already at 100%. We have 100 cows. Wow. So I'm hoping to get lots of money for the milk now. Obviously it's not that much, but it's still extra money coming from another source. So thank you for watching, hopefully you've enjoyed this video despite it being a bit of a repeat of some previous videos. Um, there's not really any other way I can do the, the feeding of the cows, um, but we won't, be have to, we won't have to do it again for a long time. In fact every animal is sorted, so that'll be it for the animal work for quite a while. Anyway, thanks for watching, hopefully you did enjoy the video. And I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.